Hello and welcome back to Geek Life. Today's video is coming to you from Germany where I'm currently teaching a class and I'd like to talk to you today about the difference between Geek as a vaporizing carburetor and Geek being a plasma reactor. Over here we have an engine. It's not the Honda GX160, it's something else. I don't normally do this on a class because we hit problems and then we're playing a new game. We're not playing does Geek work and how do you make it work? We're playing can Dan make a system work in two weeks? So this one is currently having a little issue. Um, but this is giving me a unique opportunity to show you something about vaporizing carburetors and Geek reactors. Let's take a close look at what we have here. We have a standard one inch Geek reactor. We've got a modified muffler that is now working more or less the way it's supposed to. We've got the air management valve. Same design as I use for the Hondas, just a little bit bigger. Uh, one engine, and here is a bubbler. This is an ultrasound bubbler. So instead of sucking air through fuel and vaporizing it, it uses an ultrasound unit to do the job. Um, I'll put another video of this bubbler together for you so you can have a look at that and see what the difference is. What else do you need to know about this engine? Ah, yes. We've disconnected the generator bit. Okay, I'm taking the belt off. So I can just rev the engine without worrying about how fast it's going and whether I'm damaging the generator. So today we're not looking at power, we're not looking at fuel, we're just going to look at emissions and talk about vaporizing carburetors and geek reactors. Okay, so what is petrol? Petrol is different size, different length carbon chains. So you have pentane with five carbons, which is the example we're going to work with here. Then you have benzene, which is six carbons, and it's in a ring. And then you have octane with eight carbons, again in a straight chain. We're going to burn this in a normal engine. Okay? We're going to put this through a normal carburetor to an engine, um, and we're going to burn it with air. So what are we burning? We're burning air, which is made up of nitrogen, oxygen, and then other trace gases. Okay, so nitrogen, we have 78% nitrogen. Oxygen, we have 20.9% oxygen. And there are other trace gases, which is carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, unburnt fuel, um, noble gases, and other bits and pieces, which makes up about 1% of the air. Okay, so we won't worry about this for now. We're just going to look at nitrogen and oxygen. So we're going to burn our petrol with this. Okay, when you burn petrol in a normally aspirated or carburetor fed system, what you're doing is squirting fuel into your air mix and throwing it into the engine. So you get little droplets and big droplets. And they go up in various sizes. The small droplets burn first, then the next one, then the next one, the next one, and then finally you burn the last one. This is, um, this is how a normal system works. It doesn't burn all in one go. You have the difference between com uh, combustion Detonation and pre-ignition. We're working with an internal combustion engine that burns fuel. So it burns the droplets one at a time as they work their way through. If you have a, a, a detonation, you get a flash burn. You get an instantaneous burn. Um, and you can have detonation where it starts to burn properly and then everything else reacts. And you can have pre-ignition where an engine comes up under compression and because of overheating spark plugs or bad air fuel mixes or various things, it tries to ignite before the cylinder reaches top dead center. Let's not get too involved with descriptions of combustion, detonation, and pre-ignition. Um, for the purposes of this, the, the important thing is that you have the correct air-fuel ratio. If you've got a lean air-fuel mixture, if you were to reduce the fuel screw on your normal carburetor, so you send one third less fuel, then you would have a very lean mix and the lambda reading, which is a, a calculated air fuel ratio that you can, you can pull off of your gas analyzers, that would then be very high. What you want is a lambda of one. That means you have the right amount of air to the right amount of fuel to burn com properly as combustion. If it's very, very lean or very, very rich, you'll get all kinds of other problems. Particularly when it's lean, you will get pre-ignitions and detonations. When that happens, we actually get so much heat that we split the nitrogen in the air. So we had our 78% nitrogen, and we got it so hot that we combined it with some of our oxygen to produce NOx gases. Now on the gas analyzers, they have a NOx gas sensor, 
My one currently doesn't have this because I need to spend some more money on it and have it turned on. But next time it's calibrated, I will do this. So you set your engine up as factory standard to do your emissions tests and you make sure your lambda is one, so you're not running rich or lean, and that you don't have any NOx gas. And then you know that whatever the emissions are, are true and accurate. Okay, so we're going to burn some fuel. We're going to burn a carbon atom with oxygen and we'll produce CO2. And we don't necessarily burn every single carbon atom all the way to CO2, so you get some carbon monoxide. And you don't necessarily burn the whole molecule. This may split here. This bit comes down and produces a ratio of CO2 and CO, and then this bit stays as hydrocarbon. Now our gas analyzers read a hydrocarbon count, a HC reading. This is the unburnt fuel. It's supposed to be there. It's what keeps the engine cool. Um, with a car engine, your hydrocarbon counts are really relatively low, but with a, a generator, they keep them deliberately, keep them very high to keep everything cool. And then you really shouldn't have any oxygen left because you've used it all up burning your fuel. So ideally, in a generator like this, you should have sort of 12 to 14% carbon dioxide. Um, three up to about 6% carbon monoxide, somewhere in the 200 to 300 parts per million unburnt fuel, and then zero up to about 3% oxygen. That's what you really, really should have. Um, you've burnt most of it into carbon dioxide, a little bit as far as carbon monoxide, with a load of fuel that you haven't burnt at all, and you've used up all the oxygen. If you turn down the fuel screw on your carburetor, so you're sending less fuel, then this can come up. This could come up. If this comes up, you're running really lean. Then you're going to start getting pre-ignition, you're going to start getting detonations, and it's going to make the engine really, really hot. So one of the reasons why we look at engine temperatures is to see whether we're overheating the engine or causing any other problems. If you simply try to reduce the fuel by one third, you would end up with a super, super hot engine. Okay, now is GEE a vaporizing carburetor or is it a plasma reactor? This is what you've got as normal. So if your vaporizing carburetor is preheating your fuel, what you're asking it to do is to split the fuel into little pieces to make it easier to burn. So you split everything up, you've got single atoms now, you burn this with oxygen, and it burns very, very efficiently, and you extract the maximum amount of energy out of the fuel that you can possibly get. That would normally cause your CO2 to go up, because you burned more of it to CO2. So we could say we'd have something in the sort of 14 to 16% here. You could have 1% down as low as point something percent. Your hydrocarbon should come down really low, so instead of having a few hundred, maybe you have about 50, and your oxygen content should be zero, because you've used all of it in this combustion process. That's what a vaporizing carburetor should do. If you get it really, really lean, this oxygen content can go up to about 6%. Okay, You can get a little bit more than that, but 6% really, if you've got anything more than that, then you're definitely into the realms of pre-ignition um, and detonation, and you're going to have a very, very hot engine, and it'll lose power. Uh, it'll rev, but you won't get any power out of it, and you won't be able to get any functioning, usable performance out of the engine. And if you carry on running up like that, you're going to end up damaging the engine. This is what this one did last night. We put the gas analyzer into the exhaust in here, and we got exactly those readings. We got almost no unburnt fuel, almost no carbon monoxide, loads of carbon dioxide, no oxygen. Right, I'm going to run this one again, and I'm going to show you that happening on this system. So, GEET as a vaporizing carburetor. Then I'm going to fix the little problem that we've got with it, and turn it into a plasma reactor, and show you the emissions for that. Proper GEET emissions. If your GEET reactor is working properly, then the carbon is converted into GEET gas, which is a synthetic hydrogen gas mix. It's hydrogen and other things like hydrogen. Because we've got rid of all this carbon, we don't have a CO2 reading. So you could have a CO2 reading of sort of 1 up to maybe 2%. Um, any carbon that's there is burnt all the way to CO2, so you don't get any carbon monoxide. This is normally down in this sort of range. We've used up 
all of this molecule. We've taken it all apart, broken it down, so there isn't any hydrocarbon reading. So this should be sort of zero to about 20 parts per, mi per million. The oxygen content goes up because the GEAT reactor actually produces oxygen. As far as we know, this is happening during the combustion in the cylinder. So you get kind of a 16% oxygen up to maybe 20% oxygen. When you've got a half working or dysfunctional GEAT reactor, most of the fuel gets broken down. So you get some carbon dioxide, no carbon monoxide, a bit of hydrocarbon, and it steals some of the oxygen. Once you get it absolutely perfectly and you're breaking down 100% of the fuel that you're sending through, you can get zero CO2, zero CO, no hydrocarbons, 20% oxygen. What we're about to show you is a tuning sequence on the reactor set in Germany where we're going from a, a system that doesn't work at all all the way up to something that's actually very close to a perfect system. And then we're going to add a new carburetor and new other things to it to push it up under power and finish this. Right. We're about to start the run. So I'm going to fill up the bubbler with some fuel. In there, straight petrol. Comes down through here to a filling point. The sounds in the bottom and we open the little tap and some fuel starts to flood in. Now I've got some marks that tell me how much depth I should have. Okay, that'll do. There's a lot of people on YouTube using these now for running engines and they don't have a geek reactor in the way, they're just plumbing this line, come here, wherever it's gone, this line straight into something like an air management valve and they're running their engines and it's awesome. But guys, what we found is that the petrol attacks this wire, so it's worth having them coated um, to stop it from eating the wire out. I don't normally use petrol in here because it, it breaks my, my things. And this really is for fun fuel. Okay, let's have a quick look and see if the gas analyzer is ready. Yes, yeah, she is. Turn the light. Okay. So, air, 20.9%. It's telling us there's no hydrocarbons. And there's no carbon monoxide, no carbon dioxide, which is actually a slight lie. It just zeroes itself to air. We're going to leave it on the oxygen setting and on the hydrocarbon setting, and we'll switch around and we'll have a look at these in a minute. Right. We'll start the engine. Jan, if you'd like to plug in the ultrasound. There you go. It's making fog. Let's set some valves. Take this off of here, boy. We don't need that for a minute. Right, go for it. Yeah, let go. Let go. That's it. Okay, let's let it all warm up. Come back in a minute when it's all nice and warm and you can see it running properly. Okay, so she's starting to warm up, and look, loads of pollution and horrible stuff. Okay, the ultrasound bubbler is doing its job. We're going to give this a couple of minutes to come up the temperature, then we'll lose all this smoke, and we'll put the gas analyzer in. Okay, about 4% oxygen, 50 hydrocarbon and falling, 44. Loads of carbon um, dioxide. Carbon monoxide. A bit more air. So we've got rid of our hydrocarbons. We're not producing any of this. We're producing loads of that. And we've got some oxygen. If I close the air management valve a little bit, see we rev the engine up. And the oxygen will come down. The hydrocarbons will go back up. CO2. CO. And now it's all coming back up again as it comes from proper vaporizing carburetor back into a normally burning engine. Okay, so our oxygen is going down, 
We're using it all up, we're burning the fuel. We're making carbon uh, dioxide. And this is coming back up again. Check the bubbler. Give it a little bit more fuel. Okay, so look, a heat system that is not doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, so we've just seen heat not working. All right, there's air coming back in. That's all dropping away as the sensor just freezing air. Okay, so that is what we're talking about here. Okay, heat as a vaporizing carburetor. Loads of this, not a lot of this. We can get rid of that if we're burning it all away completely and we're turning it all into carbon uh, dioxide with little to no oxygen. In fact, we can flood it with oxygen, force it to burn completely, force it to go into pre-ignition, and look at the engine temperatures. In here now will be like 250, 200 and something. Okay, and the reactor, hot. Hot reactor. Okay, we've made the engine hot. So there we go. Now we're gonna make it work as a geek system and show you this again. Okay, just watch the first clip. So it's a little bit difficult to see what the readings are there. I have to be pretty quick switching through to, to show it. Um, it's not very stable, basically, so I can't let it sit there for 10 minutes and run and give you a nice slow view. So this is what we just had. Lean vaporizing carburetor, right? Really, really hot. 50 to 35 part per million hydrocarbon, 10% CO2, more or less, 0.25% carbon monoxide, quite a lot of oxygen. In a much happier, more stable mode, and we get emissions of somewhere around these figures. Okay, that's much more like you would expect an engine to run. 